Good morning children and welcome once again to this Sunday school online class. I hope you are doing well. In the last class we learned about prophets Haggai and Zechariah who encouraged the people to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. The journey with all the prophets that you have learned was very interesting and the messages that the prophets gave to the people of Israel during the times is still applicable to us during our times of pandemic. I hope you remember the prophets which were learned, which were taught to you. Like prophets Elijah, the powerful prophet, prophet Elisha, the healer prophet, prophet Amos, the prophet of social justice, prophet Hosea, the prophet of divine love, Prophet Isaiah, who encountered the holiness of God. Prophet Jeremiah, the young and weeping prophet. Daniel and his friends, who had the gift of visions and interpretations of the vision. And Prophet Ezekiel, who gave a hope to the people in exile. I appreciate all the students who have done their assignments so beautifully depicting messages of hope to the people during our times. I thank you all students and all those who have not submitted their assignments, please do so in the coming classes. Now we will focus on the book of Apocrypha. Have you heard the word Apocrypha? What do you mean by Apocrypha? Apocrypha means hidden or secret writings. The Old Testament in the Roman Catholic Bible was divided into proto-canonical books and deuterocanonical books. The deuterocanonical books were referred to as the Apocrypha. A canonical book is one that the church acknowledges as belonging to its list of sacred books of scripture inspired by God and recognized for its beliefs and morals. There are seven books of Apocrypha in the Old Testament of the Catholic Bible which are not found in the Protestant Bible, namely Tobit, Judith, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Wisdom of Solomon, Sirach, which is also known as Ecclesiasticus, and Baruch. These books contain stories that reflect the struggle of the Jewish people to maintain their faith as they encountered religious, political, and military oppression under foreign rule in Palestine and attempted to preserve their way of life in the face of the power of Greek culture imposed on them, which was known as Hellenization. Today we will see the story of Tobit, a Jew who was taken away in captivity to Nineveh by the Assyrians. Before we begin this lesson, children, I want to tell you a story which happens most of the times in our Catholic homes. There is this girl by the name of Maria, a 24-year-old Christian girl with a decent job asking permission from her mother to marry a Hindu boy she has known for some time. She says the boy is of excellent character, has a good job and comes from a good family. Her mother's only objection is that he is a Hindu and she doesn't want to give in on that. To Maria, it doesn't make any difference that he comes from a Hindu family. She argues with her mother saying that God is not specially present in a Catholic home, especially nowadays, she says, hardly any Christian homes pray together as a family. They may only go to church on a Sunday. Even in Christian homes, there is a lot of unfaithfulness between spouses alcoholism, wife beaten, abortions, girls running away with boys of their own choice, etc. 
What do you think, students? Is the choice that Maria is making acceptable to God? We will come back to advise Maria on her choice as we complete this session on the story of Tobit. Tobit and his family live in God's presence. The story told in the book of Tobit begins in the city of Nineveh between 725 and 650 BC, the time of the great Assyrian power. The heroes of the story are Tobit, an Israelite, carried off to Nineveh during the exile of the northern kingdom of Israel. His wife Anna, his son Tobias, and Sarah, a distant relative. The main character Raphael, though he operates in the background, signifies the presence of God, directing decisions and actions of these heroes in tune with the plans of God. As a devout Jew, Tobit performed many good acts for those around him, gave food and clothes to the poor, gave a proper burial to any Jew found dead and abandoned. Tobit had once angered the Assyrian king by these burials and had been expelled from Nineveh. Later he had been allowed to return, yet he once again took steps to bury a murdered Israelite when informed of his death by his son Tobias. Tobit immediately went to the murder scene, took the body of the murdered Israelite and buried the man after dark. His neighbours jeered at him for this act. Tobit went to sleep next to the walls of the courtyard. It was not unusual to sleep outside during some seasons of the year when it was very hot. During the night, some bird droppings fell right into his eyes. This absurd happening turned into tragedy. Tobit's eyes became infected and he became blind. What made his blindness even worse was the mockery of his neighbours and even that of his own wife Anna. Tobit blinded with cataract spent his days in grief. His wife earned money at a woman's work. Once, along with her wages, her employer also gave her a little goat which began to bleat. So Tobit questioned her if she had stolen the kid and commanded her to return it to the owners. Tobit's righteous and upright nature led him to do this. Then his wife began to taunt him. Where are your charities and righteous deeds? Aren't you being punished for your wickedness? Tobit began to weep and cried in anguish to God, saying, Do not punish me for my sins and for my offences and those which my fathers committed before thee. Command my spirit to depart and become dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard false reproaches, and great is the sorrow within me. At the same time, Sarah, a distant relative of Tobit, was also afflicted, but in a different way. Sarah, the only child of Raguel, had been given to seven husbands. Why? An evil demon who was jealous of Sarah had slain each of them before he had even been with her as his wife. So the maids said to her, Do you not know that you strangle your husbands? When she heard this, she was deeply grieved, even to the thoughts of hanging herself. But on second thought, she had concern for her father, who would be disgraced if she committed suicide and he would be steeped in utter sorrow in his old age. She prayed by her window with her arms wide open, saying, 
command that I be released from the earth, that I hear reproaches no more. Already seven husbands of mine are dead. Why should I live? But if it be not pleasing to thee to take my life, command that respect be shown to me and pity be taken upon me. So students, we see Tobit and Sarah are both afflicted and they pray to God to release and to grant them some comfort in their distress. Tobit called to his side his son Tobias to make his farewell discourse, believing that death would strike him soon. Tobit instructed his son to be very faithful to the one and only God of their ancestors. Observing the law which bade one to obey his parents, succor the poor and needy, and bury the dead. Then Tobit spoke of a loan of ten talents made earlier to Gabriel, his relative, on a trip to Rages in Media. Tobit had loaned ten talents of silver to Gabriel, who lived there. Tobit requested Tobias to go to Media to recover the loan. Tobias was willing to do so on two conditions. He required a guide to accompany him on the journey to Media and a proof document of the loan to claim the money from Gabriel. Tobit agreed. In a mysterious manner, Tobias meets a stranger on the streets who introduces himself as Azariah, an Israelite willing to accompany him all the way to Media. He declared that he was not only familiar with the journey, but also with the house of Gabriel. In reality, he was the angel Raphael, but he kept this fact hidden from all the characters in the story. Perfect company for Tobias. So Tobias brought him before Tobit, who quizzed him on his identity like a prudent father. At first, Raphael seemed reluctant to reveal his background, but relents sensing the sincerity of the old man. And to his great delight, Tobit discovers that this knowledgeable and reliable Israelite comes from his own race. What better guide could he have wished for his son? On their journey under God's protection to rages in Media, they camped along the river Tigris. A huge fish leapt out of the water which frightened Tobias away. Raphael instructed Tobias to catch the fish to preserve its inner organs the gall, heart, and liver, since they had medicinal properties. Their journey led them through Igbatana, the capital of ancient media. Students, now we will see how Tobias meets Sarah. The mysterious guide suggests that they stay in Igbatana with Ragwell, a kinsman. Like an astute matchmaker, Raphael arranges a meeting between Sarah and Tobias, whom he encourages to marry each other, gently reminding Tobias that his father had instructed him to marry someone of his own relative. Tobias had heard of the strange fate that had pursued this daughter of Ragwell and certainly didn't want to become another victim. However, Assured by his loyal companion, Tobias burned the heart and liver of the fish, and the smoke that emitted simply chased the demon away. Once the demon was banished, Tobias began his marriage in the spirit of prayer and sealed his marriage that was determined before the world existed. After that, the newlyweds were able to sleep without disturbances. Ragwell had, in the meantime, secretly dug a grave to bury Tobias, had the demon succeeded in killing Sarah's eighth husband. Imagine his joy 
when Tobias survived the wedding night. He announced feasting and celebration for 14 days. So Tobias requested his companion to go alone in the meantime to Rages to collect the debt of 10 talents from Gabriel. Finally, we see how Raphael brings Tobias and Sarah safely back home. When the feasting ended, a small caravan left Igbatna for Nineveh. In the caravan were Tobias, Raphael and Sarah, along with servants and camels to transport her dowry. When they reached the gates of Nineveh, Raphael ordered the caravan to stop. He and Tobias proceeded alone towards Tobit's house. The meeting between Tobias and his parents was full of emotions. Anna had been impatiently watching down the street for a son to arrive. She spied him in the distance, hurried to tell Tobit and ran back into Tobias's arms. When the blind Tobit reached them, Raphael urged Tobias to smear some of the gall from the fish's organs on his father's eyes. Mir miraculously, Tobit recovered his sight at once. Tobit was able to follow his son to the gate of the city, where he became acquainted with his daughter-in-law, Sarah. Tobit and Tobias now wanted to reward their loyal guide for all his help and guidance. Finally, he revealed his true identity to them, saying, I am Raphael, the angel of the Lord. As he dissolved into thin air, Raphael begged Tobit and Tobias to remain faithful and to thank God for his goodness to them. Now, students, as we have listened to this story, we will see the story in action in a video. In the city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Ragel, had lost another husband. It was her seventh husband who had died, and every man who she got married to died the very next day. Look at Sarah, just sitting and crying like as if she had nothing to do with it. You think her husband just died? She must have killed them all. And now she's pretending to know nothing about it. Not one or two, but seven are dead. Stop it! Please don't talk like that about me. I'm innocent. Oh, you want us to believe what you say? Everybody in this town knows that you are the one who killed them all. No, I didn't kill them. Please believe me. What do you want us to believe? That one by one, seven of your husbands had heart attacks? And that too the very next day? Stop it! Please don't say any more and go away! Okay, we'll go. But don't think that we believe you. Oh God, I have had enough. I would rather die than go on living like this. Lord, please have mercy on me. Anna, I just remembered that I had given some money to my friend Gabriel. We could get it back any time. Huh? You are remembering this now? You should get the money immediately. We don't have to starve like this anymore. Tobias, I am blind and I cannot travel that far. Can you go to Rages and collect the money from my friend? Of course I will, father. Good. Then you must go and find a trustworthy man to travel with. We can pay him for his time. I shall go right away, father. Tobias walked for a long time searching for a travel companion. He couldn't find anybody who knew the way to Rages. Ah, I'll sit down here for some time. How am I going to find someone who knows the way to Rages? Hmm, I must trust in Lord as father says. He will show me a way. Hello. Huh? His face is so, uh, so beautiful. 
What do you want? I saw that you were sitting here tidily. Is there something I can do to help? Oh, I'm looking for a travel companion who knows the way to Rages in media. I can help you. I know the road to Rages. I have been there many times. That's wonderful. Do you know the house of a Gibel there in Rages? Ha! Huh, of course I do. I have stayed at his house for a while. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a great coincidence. Please, can you come with me to Rages? I can pay you for your time. Sure. Why not? We can start today itself if you want. Oh, by the way, my name is Tobias, the son of Tobit. What's your name? I am Azarius, and I belong to the same tribe as you do. All right, come, let's go home and pack our things. Tobias left for Rages along with his newfound friend and travel companion, Azarius. They sought the blessings of Tobit before they left for their journey. Azarius, please take good care of my son. I will, sir. My son, may the God bless you. May his angels protect you all the time. Have a safe journey and return to us soon. Tobias and Azarius walked for a long time and soon they reached the banks of river Tigris. Tobias, it will be dark soon. Let's camp here tonight and continue the journey tomorrow morning. Yes, friend. Hmm, the water looks very clear here. Let me take a bath. Go ahead. The water is very deep, so be careful. I won't go far. Hmm, it feels so nice. Huh? What is that? It's... it's a whale! Azarius, help! There's a whale coming! It will kill me! Don't worry. It's just a fish. Catch it by its tail and throw it onto the shore. Huh? That was so easy. Here, take this knife. Hmm, we can roast the whole fish on fire. It will be delicious. No, I want you to cut the fish and keep the heart, liver and gall separately. We can roast rest of the fish. Uh, why do you want to keep those? I will tell you that on our way. Tobias did as told to him. He kept the heart, liver and gall of the fish separately wrapped in a bag. They continued their journey and after a few days, they reached the city of Egbana. Look there. That's the city of Egbana. Did you know that you have one of your relatives living there? Our relation? Father didn't say anything about them. His name is Ragel and he has a beautiful daughter, Sarah. You, my friend, are her next of her kin. Sarah? Daughter of Ragel? I think I've heard the name somewhere. Hmm. You must have heard the stories of how seven of her husbands had died after marrying her. Oh yes! I've heard about the evil spirits that is in love with her and how they kill anyone who marries her. Yes, it's true. Not one of her husband had survived a day after marrying her. Poor girl. I hope I can do something to help her. I think you should marry her with the intentions of starting a sacred family. Huh? But what about the devils? Don't worry about them. I will take care of that. Come, let's go to their house. There's something special about him. Anyway, I'll do as he says. Tobias married Sarah as Azarius had told him. Tobias. Son of Tobit, I give you my daughter, Sarah, to be your wife, according to the law of Moses. Azarius instructed Tobias to burn the heart and liver of the fish inside their room. 
What are you doing? I'm burning the heart and liver of the fish that I caught the other day. Why are you burning those? I don't know, dear. My friend Azarius had told me to do this. Now come on, Sarah. Let us pray for God's mercy. Oh God, have mercy on us and let us live together for a long time. Oh God, please don't let anything happen to Tobias. His father had suffered a lot and my daughter had been suffering for a long time. Please let them live for a long time. Master! Master! What happened? Did Tobias die too? No, Master! He's alive! <laughs> Tobias is alive! Praise and glory to you, my lord. Thank you. The evil spirits in Ragil's house flew out when Tobias burned the heart and liver. Tobias was alive and he was happy that he did as Azarius had told him. My friend, I don't know how to thank you. My father-in-law has given me half of his wealth too. My father and mother don't have to starve anymore. It's all because of you. Thank you, my friend. Everything happens as per God's plans, my friend. Now you stay here. I will go to Rages and meet Gabriel. Thank you. Here, take the scroll with you. This document will tell Gabriel to hand over the money to you. I will be glad to do it. I will be back within a week. Azarius returned quickly, and when he came back, Jabel also came with him, carrying the money. Tobias decided to return to his father along with his wife, Sarah. My daughter, go in peace. Respect your husband's parents as your own. Let us hear only the best about you. They traveled for many days through the hills and deserts. Tobias had become a very happy man now. He had a beautiful wife and he had plenty of money with him. Azarius, my friend, all these good things happened to me only because of you. I'm only sad thinking about my father, only if he could get his sight back. Hmm, do you have the gall of the fish that I told you to keep aside? Yes. I have. I've been carrying that all along. As soon as you reach home, you must put the fish gal to your father's eyes. Huh? Why should I do that? You must trust me, my friend. Hey, look! It's our son! Huh. <sighs> He's back. <laughs> yes, he is. My son. Mother, it's so good to see you. Tobias told them what had happened. And then Tobias applied the fish gal on Tobit's eyes. Huh? I can see now. <laughs> I can see everything. Praise and glory to God for allowing me to see again. Father, this is a miracle. Yes, it is my son. We must thank Azarius for this. It's he who told me to apply this on your eyes. And all the good things that happened to me, my wife, our fortune, it's all because of him. Son, I don't know how to pay you. We will pay you double. No, we will give you half of everything we have. Because of you, we were blessed in so many ways. Tobit, huh? Be grateful to the Lord. He has seen all the good deeds you had done. He has seen your miseries, and he has heard your prayers. I am his angel. My name is Raphael. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing mercy on us. And that day, God rewarded Tobit and his family for never losing hope in the midst of hardships. Tobit lived for a very long time and he went on to see his grandchildren. Now children, let us see the significance of the story. 
fidelity to God in our life, chiefly family life. Marrying within one's religion and family. Trust and loyalty to God even when the going get, becomes rough. Tobit's faithfulness to the law of God in exile. God's providence of sending the archangel Raphael as a trustworthy guide to Tobias. God tests and rewards his faithful people. The book of Tobit presents the sanctity of marriage, respect and honor to parents, as well as the importance of prayer, thanking God for all his provisions. We see in this story how Tobit and his family give praise and thanks to God after they have accomplished everything that angel Raphael has done for them. Now students, having understood the story, let us turn to the word of God. Let us quieten our minds and our hearts, sit in a prayerful position and listen to what God has to speak to us through his word. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verses 15 to 22. Then Raphael said, I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels who present the prayers of the saints and enter into the presence of the glory of the Holy One. Tobit and Tobias were both alarmed and they fell upon their faces, for they were afraid. But he said to them, Do not be afraid, you will be safe. But praise God forever, for I did not come as a favor on my part, but by the will of our God. Therefore, praise Him forever. All these days I merely appeared to you and did not eat or drink, but you were seeing a vision. And now, give thanks to God, for I am ascending to Him who sent me. Write in a book everything that has happened. Then they stood up, but they saw Him no more. So they confessed the great and wonderful works of God and acknowledged that the angel of the Lord had appeared to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us imagine the scene when the mysterious companion of Tobias reveals towards the end of the story his true identity as one of the seven archangels who stand in the presence of the Lord and presents the prayer of the people of Israel to God. Tobit and Tobias, full of fear and reverence, prostrate before this angelic guide. Do not be afraid, assured the man. Peace be with you. It was all God's will. Then the angel disappears from their sight. Both of them are left alone, spellbound in peace and joy. Imagine Tobias turning towards his father to say, How blessed I have been to have remained in the company of Angel Raphael. Father, I have drawn closer to God. I have been able to recognize his plan for me and been courageous to carry out God's will. Praise God forever. Do you think Tobit and his family would have wanted Raphael to stay always with them? Would it have been better for Raphael to have stayed? In what ways do you think the family of Tobit could keep the memory of Raphael always alive in their home? Let's pause for a while. Speak to God 
and tell him what you think about his presence in your own home students. Is he there as he was in the life of Tobit and his family? In what way? Let us pray to Angel Raphael, thanking him for his guidance and company regarding Tobias and asking him for the same kind of help in our lives. Prayer O loving and merciful Father God, we thank you for listening to the prayers of Tobit and Sarah and sending your Archangel Raphael to heal them. Saint Raphael the Archangel, thank you for coming as the healing angel of God and helping Tobit to see again and blessing Sarah with Tobias as a husband. Thank you for accompanying Tobias and guiding him on his journey, enabling him to collect his father's money and also building up his faith in God and helping him to encounter God in a deeper manner. Dear Angel Raphael, help us to trust God when we suffer from various sicknesses, especially during this pandemic and surround us with your healing love and lead us to experience God in a very deep manner. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Assignment So students, let us get back to Maria, who was not convinced about the presence of God in a Christian home. Now, as you have seen the story of Tobit, which provides a convincing answer to Maria, advise Maria on how she could face the difficulties of making God present in her family life because of her upcoming marriage with a boy from another faith. You can write a small message to Maria. Thank you students for your participation and see you once again. Bye.